What's up, Lawn Care Nation? Richie Plumes, Plumes Lawn and Landscape. So, been a few weeks since our, uh, I say about two and a half, three weeks since I posted a video, and the reason why is uh, I broke my foot. <laughs> so, I was kind of hobbled, so it was taking me longer to get stuff done than uh, what it normally does. So, uh, really just didn't have time to set a camera up. But uh, this, I had a guy ask me last week if he should do commercial working solo. I figured, heck, I'll make a video on it. Uh, and my answer is yes. I mean, if, if you're already doing residential, commercial is really not that much more difficult. There's a few more things that you, you're required to have that uh, you, you probably should have, but you're not necessarily required to have to do residential. And those things are like, for me to do commercial properties, I have to have commercial insurance for my vehicle. I have to have general liability, which everybody should have. It's not that expensive, 20, 30 bucks a month for general liabilities. Relatively inexpensive to cover your high end. And then uh, uh, workers' compensation. A lot of times they want you to have workers' comp and a business license. All right, so it, everything varies from state to city to county, wherever you're from may be different. Where I live, uh, I'm, I'm in the county, so I'm not required to have a business license. We have a business license simply because, uh, you know, if, if we need to buy a plant material for a landscape job, you're required to have a business license to buy wholesale. So uh, we do have a business license. We do have workers' comp. We do have general liability. We have commercial auto. Um, there's probably a few other things in there that I'm just kind of forgetting. But um, as far as getting commercial accounts, is just a little more difficult. Um, you can go through... I guess you could say, what are they, um, I guess subcontracting, I guess you can be subcontracted out by a property management company or something. That's I, that's something that I don't recommend. Uh, I'm not a fan of it. Uh, they usually get the property at a, at a good price uh, for them, but not a good price for you. So uh, they'll... Uh, Say they get a property that's $200 of service, they're going to ask you to do it for 75 bucks, and that's just not the game I like to play. So, um, personally, if you're going to do a commercial, make sure you're dealing with the owner of the business, uh, someone in charge of, of, of grounds over the business, things like that. We do multiple restaurants. Uh, we've got a fast food chain that we deal with. We deal directly with the fast food chain. We do not go to a subcontracting company at all. Um, our other local businesses or other commercial properties we have are just local businesses. So you can you can drop in. There's nothing wrong with dropping in. Drop a letter in the mail. Say, hey, I'm so and so. Introduce yourself. Uh, I'm interested in maybe maintaining your property. So and so. So on and so forth. Yada yada yada. So you can do it. Uh, it it's not impossible to do. Um, just be prepared on commercial properties that usually most of them are a little larger than your regular. Uh, residential lawn most of them I'm not saying all of them but most of them uh, we tend to spend on average anywhere from an hour and a half to two maybe even three hours on most properties um, you know it's it's larger properties um, I work I'm working by myself today I just got finished doing two medical facilities uh, an academy sports and now I'm going to go to two residentials and I'm done for the week I've got um, I picked up another residential home I don't do many of them um, past videos y'all have seen the one that I do do we've added another one that we've done in the past it takes us about 10 minutes she called me a few weeks ago and asked me to do it uh, it, it's a long hour route. I figured, right, what the heck, we'll go ahead and knock it out for them. It, it's really easy. It takes 10 minutes and we're gone. It's $50 for 10 minutes of work and I'm out of there. So uh, um, that's my minimum is 50 bucks for residential. So I don't care how big your yard is, $50 is what it's going to cost you. So um, we're going to go by today. We're going to knock these two out. Like I said, we just finished up uh, medical facilities. Uh, one took me solo it's 12 o'clock now i was on my first property at uh, seven o'clock this morning so i mean you're looking at what's that four hours eight nine ten eleven twelve five hours I do math um so i mean five hours worth of work um uh, and i've knocked out three properties uh generally if you have a helper with you you could probably have those knocked out in two and a half hours uh, that's the thing you gotta think about eventually you're gonna have employees or if, if you decide to stay solo stay solo that's I've had multiple crews and with COVID and, and all of that, it just seems like employees have just gone. They don't, uh, 
it's hard work. It's hot work. It don't pay well. I mean, you got to think lawn maintenance is the lowest paying of all the green industry. So if you can carve out a niche in irrigation or or chemical application or landscape lighting or just landscaping in general, you're going to make more money pretty much than uh, than what you're going to make in lawn maintenance. Lawn maintenance is not a big, uh, uh, I guess, profit margin game. But you know, uh, we make good money. We make a good living. I'm happy where I'm at, so uh, we still do the landscape side. Uh, matter of fact, we've got a big sod job getting ready to come up. We do sod, we do landscape, do irrigation. We do it all, but maintenance is a good cash flow side for you. You know, it's 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 pretty much always going to be there. Um, another plus to or a pro to to commercial for the most part, they're going to pay year round. Um, you're not always going to be mowing but there's always something to do on a property year round that can be done to enhance the look of the property make it better make it nicer things like that so um, generally they're going to pay year round there's some that don't but for the most part they do uh, the ones that i have that don't pay year round and they change to like a single service in december no services january two services february um, <clears throat> we use those for the times that we do, like say mulch. Um, you know, we're gonna do mulch. We're gonna go by. We're gonna pick up the trash. I mean, they get super trashy. So that's something else. Uh, a negative to a commercial is you're gonna have a lot of garbage. I mean, it's just it is what it is. We got little grabbers in a bucket. We pick it up. We go on. Uh, that, that's that's baked into the price. I mean, that's we price it for that. We we know we're gonna have to pick up garbage, so we know we're gonna be there. Uh, doing that before we can ever start mowing. So we make sure that we go ahead and, and price that in um, so that we're not losing any money from being there. Your time's valuable, my time's valuable. Uh, you know, know your worth. You know, don't sell yourself short and think that you can't charge for that because I promise you, you can. Um, next off, uh, some of the other negatives and positives. Let's see, um, for the most part, uh, depending on the the property that you do um, you don't have to deal with homeowners coming out and speaking to you uh, from time to time you may have the business owner come out but for the most part they're working they, they don't want to have to stop what they're doing to come out and talk to you they're working they're not at home just sitting on the couch uh, watching you through the window they're trying to work you're doing your job you get out of there the sooner you get out the happier they are because they, they want to get their job done so um, so there's a plus to that side. You don't have to deal with that. Uh, other than you do get the occasional employee, they want to come out and ask questions, and they're interested in what you do, and you don't want to talk about the equipment and stuff. So, um, so, so my thing is, is, if you're solo and you're on the fence of going commercial, don't be afraid to do it. I know a lot of people hate it. They don't do it. They say they can't make any money at it. I know a lot of people say they can't make money in residential. I made money in both. So, I mean, I, I just enjoy the commercial side more. It's just everybody's got their preferences of what they enjoy i enjoy the commercial uh, and I, that's what i like to do so uh, but anyway guys we're gonna go to the next one. we're gonna get this one mode i'll probably uh, drop the camera on it you guys haven't seen this yard in a few years so uh it's a zorgia yard uh we did have a pretty bad freeze this winter a lot of people think that uh you know we're crazy when we say we had a bad freeze but we had uh, i think it was late december early january it was january uh, we had a freeze that uh dipped us into like negative 10 you know, that's that's almost unheard of around here so uh, negative 10 degrees is pretty cold for us so anyway guys uh it's it slowed the zoysia down it, it took it a while to come out because of that uh we're it's finally starting to recover uh so we don't like cold weather so but anyway let's go get that mowed up like i said i'll drop the camera on it and uh let you guys uh, come along with me
finished up. So uh, you can see uh, see some of the bare spots in that zoysia where we had that deep freeze this winter that uh, that's just you know not normal for this area. So usually don't get that cold. Uh, zoysia is kind of like Bermuda; it turns brown in the winter and goes dormant. But uh, the deep freeze was pretty tough on the, the root system this year. So. Uh, it's starting to make a comeback. It's starting to green up. We had some good storms last night or yesterday evening uh, I had a lot of wind and rain, but uh, we need a good soaking rain. We still haven't had one of those in a while, but uh, uh, We're starting to get showers every day. So everything should slowly start greening back up and, and getting healthy again Thank goodness. So but you remember back at the beginning of the video. I told you guys that I had broke my foot So I've done this about a month and a half ago, I guess and I'm finally getting to where I can walk and you know without too much of a limp I still got it still lets me know it's there but uh, I'm able to work and I, and I worked through it but like I said I worked a little slow kind of give you a backstory how I broke my foot is uh, the, the first time we done it we really don't know what happened uh, you know just a stress fracture that just compounded into a, a much worse ordeal than it should have been I guess uh, I should have probably stayed off of it a little more and it would have been okay but uh, I've told this story to a few people that uh, that I know that I'm friends with and they think it's kind of funny but uh, it had actually began to get better and I could walk wasn't having any pain walking or anything and uh, I'd love to say that I had some sort of wild animal broke into my house and I kicked it in the face and broke it uh, like that but uh, it's not exactly how it happened I got out of the shower and was getting ready to leave the bathroom after showering put on my clothes and I put my house shoes on and uh, got the house shoe it's kind of like a slipper you slide your foot into and I guess where my big toe and my second toe instead of going into the shoe it kind of missed the shoe and I caught it between my toes and I rolled my ankle over and and that's where it really messed it up the most so uh, yeah that was uh, not one of my more graceful moments I guess you would say so but anyway guys make sure you like subscribe and we'll see you guys in the next video